Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. We just want to take a minute just to, just to love on the Lord because he's good. You know, I, I just thank him because, you know, it, it, it's nothing great that I've done in my life. Uh, just things that I don't even deserve. But because he's good and faithful. Hallelujah, somebody. I, I just, I know we're in the TV set station right now. And I, I know we got a show to do. But I just want to worship the Lord just for a few minutes. I, I know I don't want to get in a rush tonight because there, there's some chains that need to fall off tonight in people. There, there's, there's conviction in people that when you ask God to give it, to take it, you still got it. So we're asking now that you will give it all to him tonight. Just give it to him. Just give it to him tonight. Give it to him for your grandbaby. Stop worrying about that son. You pray and wearing yourself up to death. You wear yourself to death over your son, your grandson, your, your granddaughter. She, she's out there. But if you trust and believe and have faith, I'm just reminded that if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, if we just have a smidgen of faith, hallelujah, believe that, that in the midst of their, their, their backslidden state, regardless of where they are, that we believe that God is going to save them, that he's going to protect them. That he's going to honor our request. He's going to honor our faith. My God. Mm. God is going to honor our faith. My Lord right there. Hallelujah somebody. Hallelujah. Yes. Mm. Glory to God. Listen. We get ready to get started. Amen. And we are already. We are already in a, in a place man. That God is an amazing God. And I, I tell you. Uh, I just thank God this evening. For life, health and strength. I thank him for being who he is, the author and finisher of my life, amen, and, and people dying with, that don't even know Jesus, mm. they're dying that don't even know who he is, they're dying not even being a believer, there's so many people dying don't even have faith, they don't believe in Jesus, and, and so we got to continue to be praying and edifying one another in this time and this season, it's time out for trying to kill one another. You know, especially those that are doing right. But we're going to make you aware of the false prophets. And we're going to make you aware of things that are not right. Because just because the world has adapted some things don't mean it's right. But before, hallelujah, amen. I'm going to welcome, amen, our co-host. Good evening, sir. God bless you. Uh, good evening, good evening, good evening. Can you hear me good, sir? Yes, sir. I hear you loud and clear. You are clear. Amen. God bless you and God bless all our listeners. Amen. Uh, that's been on the airways with us. Uh, such an awesome night. Amen. We're looking forward to a powerful show. Um, our last show, I tell you what, it really stirred up the pot. Mm. Amen. It really, it really turned, uh, you know, um, you know, a lot of people had reactions to it. Um, I mean, that last show was, uh, it was very inspirational. Um, but, but, you know, I mean, this is, this is what we do. We, this show is very progressive. We going to do what God called us to do. Amen. We Amen. don't mean to offend anybody. We don't mean to upset anybody. Amen. But like Pastor uh, Nino said, we going, we going to do what God told us to do. And we're going to tell what's right. I'm like to say good evening to uh, Dr. Ritten Benson um, on the line uh, tonight. Amen. Uh, Jerome Peterson, my good friend out of Ohio, uh, Emmett, Emmett John, Johns, amen. amen, my good friend Crystal, amen, coming in, checking in, uh, Miss Betty Richardson, amen, joining us, James Harris, uh, good evening to all of y'all, uh, I see my good friend Ronald, the deacon, Ronald uh, Freeman, uh, tuning in, amen, we want to welcome all of y'all, like Pastor said, uh, share this on your Facebook page, amen, we want to be at a thousand viewers uh, before the end of the year. Amen. But I'm ready to rock, Pastor. Amen. God is good. Amen. The anointing is already moving on the show. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. If you got any uh, comments, please begin to uh, 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 you know, let your comments come in. We're going to read them. We're going to get to it. Amen. If you got prayer requests for family or something, amen. Right? It's a good evening. Amen. We are ready to do this thing. We are talking about some false prophets tonight. Amen. False prophets. Hallelujah. So get y'all questions ready. Amen. We are looking for an awesome time tonight. Hallelujah. In the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Pastor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Pastor, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, my, my screen is uh, my screen is frozen, but your screen is, is live. So okay. if you have any comments, I can't see them. Got you. Okay, and uh, I, I don't know if that's affecting the broadcast, being that I'm frozen and you're not frozen. But I know we stirred up the atmosphere. The atmosphere has been stirred up, and the enemy right. is, is, is is frozen right now. And I can't see anything. Um, I, I see you, but I don't see any comments or anything like that. I don't know if any people are listening or watching or viewing. Everybody is here. Uh, they're still chiming in. Amen. Amen. The, the, the broadcast is still going forward. We can hear you loud and clear. Amen. Pastor. Amen. Well, we bind so, up the I, enemy right now in the name of Jesus that anything that trying to hinder us from a good show will be defeated, is already defeated. And we ask that God continue to bless it tonight. Amen. Uh, the conversation part two. Amen. Last week, as Pastor Carl stated, and I'm telling you right now, I think I got, I want to say ridiculed. Because, uh, you know, it's a touchy conversation. And I want to make it clear because many of you watched the show last week. And many of you know what I said without a shadow of doubt. That for one, know that who I was talking about. And that would pertain to what? Leaders. Uh, no, shape where, no shape and form that I'm talking about people that are just ordinary people coming off the street. People come just with, with no titles. Not talking about them. I have not ever been talking about them, but those that call themselves leaders should have a, a higher standard. And that's who we were pertaining to because we are seeing now that there are so many distractions in the body of Christ in the church that now we are saying that it's okay when it's indeed the opposite. So the question, uh, the topic last night, uh, last week, I'd rather say for those that are new, the, que the topic question was, is it okay for uh, female pastors to wear tight pants in the pulpit? Now, I, I, I can't read the comments, but I would like to hear from the women because there was a lot of women said we need to do a part two. So, so because I know what was said in, in, in um, some of the conversation, but I'm I want to hear from the women tonight. Is it a distraction what a woman wear, especially a, a, a preacher, a teacher, you know, those that, that are supposed to be uh, uh, laborers of, of God, is it a distraction of what we have on in the pulpit? Pastor, I'm going to let you go ahead on and carry it on, and, and hopefully we'll get back on. i get back on live. Amen. Amen. Uh, my, my reference to that was, uh, now, if women wear and they feel comfortable in, you know what I'm saying, you know, it's up to them. If they feel that that's something they can wear, then fine. But here's my thing that I stated last week. When I'm in the pulpit, I do not want anything to distract the word that is coming forth for me. Right, now, right. if I was up in the pulpit and I had a, a white beater on, or I had some stuff that just distracted people, I want to be knowledgeable of that. You see what I'm saying? I don't want to be a distraction. I want to decrease. Yes. I want to decrease so the word that I'm bringing forward won't be hindered. Yes, sir. Because let's, let's think about it. Let's think about it, Pastor. And we know this very well. There are seasoned saints. There are people of God who've been in the ministry for a long time. But then there are babes in Christ. Right. So if a woman who is shapely or whatever wears something, um, and they looking at that, their mind, instead of getting the word, let's just be honest. Let's just be honest. Some men are not there. Some women are not there yet. Hmm. Okay, they are still dealing with a lot of strongholds. And lust, the uh, the eye, uh, the lust of the eye could be one of those strongholds that, that binds them. Right. So now this woman of God, and it's, and, and, and it's probably nothing with her. Uh -huh. It's nothing with her. <clears throat> but if, if, if the individual is looking at her in a sexual way, and he's not concentrating on the word, Somebody let me know what good is that doing. Hey, look, Pastor. It's like when you, right. It's like when you go to school, right, and you in class. Right. And the teacher teaching. But your mind is somewhere else. So you're not listening to what they're saying because your mind is somewhere else. Now, I don't know how many of y'all seen this video, but it was a teacher, and she wore really tight clothes. 
And some of the parents was calling me and saying, I don't want my sons or my daughters looking at this uh, this teacher who wears tight clothes. Hey, and some it. of the students were saying they, it did hinder them because, you know what I'm saying, what? They're younger. They're hormones or whatever. It's the same thing with babes in Christ. They're younger. You're right. not spiritually. Right. So when they see something like that, you know what I'm saying, it can distract them from the word. I never want to do nothing that distracts um, people from getting the word of God. That's just me, how I feel about that. Amen. Um, I don't want I don't want to be a distraction. Now, and I'm not necessarily saying it's on a woman, but I'm saying we should be conscious. Because guess what? Guess what? If you're at work and you start wearing stuff like that, some people they're, they're gonna tell you. Or even on the plane now. Mm-hmm. When you get on a plane, if you got some stuff on that they don't really bring, they won't let you do it. They won't let you do it. Because everybody's not there. Everybody's mindset ain't like like uh, me, Pastor Nino, and some of these other seasoned Christians that's on the line tonight. So, and it goes for the man too. Like when I see these men, and men don't got a pastor don't wear necessarily tight stuff, but they wear flashy stuff. They wear a lot of gold. Right. Uh, like I said, I seen a pastor with all kind of gold in his suit. He got a gold mic on. He got one of these big rings on, and you know what I'm saying, all kind of jewelry. And, you know what I'm saying? And what some of that stuff can be distracting also because now people look at them like, oh man, look at that suit he got on. Or look at this, or look how he dressing. He got this and gold microphones and, and all this stuff. See, this stuff can be distracting. Mm-hmm. This stuff can be distracting. Because we know John the Baptist, the uh Jesus said there was none greater than him. Mm-hmm. But guess what? He ate locusts and had on camel skin and camel hair. He went in you know what I'm saying? And I know a lot of people say, well, that was back in that time, Pastor. But still, back in that time, they had royal robes and stuff, too, though. They had okay, respect. might have not been good. Go ahead, Pastor. They had respect, Pastor. You know what I'm saying? That that, that simple word, respect for themselves. You know, to a point. Listen, that, that stuff is old, what you're saying. But here's the thing. Jesus wore sandals, but at the same time, they had enough respect to when they went into the house, they, they, they washed their feet. Come on. They didn't just track their sandals all up and down the house. They 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 washed their feet because that was the part of the custom that you know when they would get ready to relax and and and, and have a meal. They didn't sit around the table with the sandals on and the dirty feet there. Well, you know they still had a respect. Is what I'm saying. But going back to what you were saying, not only the babes in Christ, but basically, Pastor, we need to say everybody could be affected. You understand? It will affect us one way or the or the or the another because. You think about when I mentioned, I mentioned about uh, last week, I mentioned about David. Now, David have seen Bathsheba how many times? Probably more than once with her husband Uriah when they came around because he was the he was the captain of the guard. He was in charge of the army. So so he know he had to know his wife and seen his wife more than more than just that first time. But he he, he when he saw on a, on a regular occasion, she probably just she probably was covered up, had clothes on. But it was when his mind saw that her nakedness, then it began to wonder, <laughs> cause she didn't have no clothes on. She didn't have what she was normally covered with. So that's what I'm saying. So even the anointing he had, he, it, he when he saw it, it it, it changed him. It, it it changed his thought pattern when he saw it. So and it was a distraction. That was a distraction because it took his mind on what he was supposed to be doing, and he became an adulterer. Then he, he not only was an adulterer, but he was a murderer. But at the same time, as you said, Pastor, we should want to decrease, especially when we get ready to to, to give a, a word to God's people and, and those that are that, that may want to come to Christ. Because those that come to Christ, you know, guess what? The pastor, listen, us that go, go to church all the time, we know how we like to enjoy. But then there are some people that ain't never been to church they came from the street, but then they go into church and the church playing uh, cuss, cussing music. Like the, some of this this one church I saw up north mm-hmm. playing playing the same music they play on the radio station, the world play. They playing it right there in the church. It was no beats. It wasn't the radio version. It was the straight up killer word. And people were shaking and rumping. And, and, and it was another video where the young people, you, I think we we shared this with each other. That young, that the young mm-hmm. people had an anniversary or something, that, and the, the guy he was shaking his rump like a girl. He was just marching and swaying down the down the aisle, you know. And they and everybody adapt that stuff. 
See, the old people at first, when they first was was came into church, they didn't like it. They 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 moaned against it. But but as long as the leader was good with it, they they after a while they just gave up and gave in and say, you know what, we 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 we'll, we'll be all right. We'll let them go on to do it. <laughs> the kids got to have fun. No, yeah, we they got to have fun, but they they got still got to be a, a separation. You can't play worldish music. That's that's that got all that cussing and stuff in the church. You just can't do it. So that stuff could be a distraction. And so that's what we were talking about last week. You know, we 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 are we are held accountable because guess what? They're always looking for us to fall. They're always looking for us to make mm-hmm. a mistake. They're always looking for us to so they can say, yeah, I knew you weren't who you were. I know it. I knew it. They were just lying the whole time. And, and you could have been real. You could have been sold out for Christ, and you made that mistake, and you you turned somebody off because. Uh, 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 of what you, how you carried yourself, or, or or what you had on, you know, because pastor get it, you know, we're talking about we're talking about leaders right now, but guess what? Back in the day, you know, there was there was women like you said, they there's this one teacher, she she wearing stuff so tight, you know that those those uh, middle school age kids, you know, they they're changing, they they're going through puberty, and they're, and their hormones, and they're talking to the little boys about the teacher, and you know they're doing. And at the same time, you remember back in the day, uh, you see a, 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 a woman in the mall, boy, and joke us what they start doing, Pastor, or see them in the car wash, what they start doing. They start whistling, uh, what they call it, cat calling. What they call it, cat calling. Back in the day, is that too old for y'all? <laughs> what do they call it, cat calling, right? Amen. <laughs> they, they, they start whistling. <whistles> they doing all that. Mama, woo, wee, mm. They're doing all those sounds, you know, and, and the woman, and then look at that, look at this pastor, some of them felt so uncomfortable, but they didn't realize that what they had on was the distraction, see, if they didn't, if, and, and some, you know, unfortunately, you know, like I said, some, some things ain't for everybody, you know, it, it's just like, you know, if you're a changed person, you're out, your 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 clothes change, you know, you ain't wearing the, the street, street, uh, club, uh, clothes no more, is that right, y'all? How many how many people tonight that saved and the, the, turned their life around still wearing the stuff they wore to the club? Y'all raise your hand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> raise your hand in here if you if you still wear the same stuff you wore when you were going to the to the to the hole in the wall, the juke joint, and the club. Are you you still wearing those same things? Nope, you're not. You ain't you're not wearing them same things. And because your you, your mind changed and you your dress changed, your attitude changed. But there are some people today, they, they, they want their attention. And that's where a lot of it comes from. They want the attention. That's it. And they can say they didn't want the attention all they want. But why we do why, why we go to certain restaurants? Because we got a taste for that certain thing. Like, I like to go to Red Lobster because I love those biscuits and I can eat a bucket of them. <laughs> so you, go, you, you wear certain things because you like the way it feels. And, and, you know, I, I, I mean, you know, I'm not saying it's bad to wear makeup. But some some women, pastor, listen. The maker has become the crutch. You know why? Because guess what they say? I feel ugly because I don't have my makeup on today. And I said, mm, I knew it was something. I don't. I, I forgot to put on my, my eyeshadow. I forgot to put on my makeup. I forgot to do this. I know I don't feel myself. What you mean you don't feel yourself? You're not happy the way that God created you. God created you beautiful. And I thank God that that my wife is not a makeup person. That. You know, the most she might wear is some some lip gloss or something like that. She she just natural, and I thank God for that. You know, and I'm not saying that you know it's wrong, but some people cake it on, and then some people they they feel like they ugly without it. Now, if you vain. feel if that's right, vain, you feel if you feel that, then you not happy the way God created you. Something is wrong with that picture. But go ahead, Pastor. Okay, let me get into a few of these comments. Um, Minister Ma said, "Yes, it is a distraction." Because everybody isn't saved. Tight clothes shouldn't be in the pulpit. The, the word says modest appeal. Amen. It says modest appeal. You there, was a female, there, was a, there was a woman that said that, right? Right. That was uh, Minister Ma. Um, um, uh, Minister uh, James says, amen, brothers. Uh, men, too, we should uh, be wise about our pants while in the sacred, sacred, Office of the pulpit, which is true. When you hit that pulpit, you are representing God. Let's re- now, let's re- now let's get to that point. Uh oh, uh oh. Yeah. Like he said, you, "This is a when you get behind that pulpit, that is not for play, play." That's right. Okay. The spirit is moving, and demons is coming for you. That ain't that ain't for play, play. That's it. He said, "Even nowadays, male pastors are wearing trendy clothes. They wear them little tight pants, them little flare pants." 
You know what I'm saying? Um, they look like the world. Right. That's your point. Right. They look like the world. Um, it may be more appropriate women clothing. This is true. Um, that can be a distraction too. Um, Mother Barbara Rainford said David became consumed with what he beheld. See what I'm saying? So this man David was anointed. That's right. I said this that. He yeah. was anointed. Right. Right. He got, he was anointed. But like you said, Pastor, when he seen Bathsheba, he he slipped and fell. Right. Hallelujah. He slipped and fell. Um, right. Pastor Davis tuning in. He said, hello, Pastor. This is Pastor Davis. Being straight to the point, all that is proclaiming to be followers of Christ should consider how they present themselves. We have to be different, not conforming to the world. Uh, when we accept Jesus, there must be a change in ourselves. See, some people still want to be, be cool. They want to be <laughs> straddling the fence. You know what I'm saying? We, let's, let's face the fact, man, there's rules to this. Okay, there's rules to this. Okay, I can't do the same things I used to do uh-huh. now. Okay, I can't do it, Pastor. Right. I got, when people looking at me, they got to see Christ. Right. They can't see Pastor Carl got on 9,000 chains, earrings in his ear. And I'm not saying nothing is it, wrong with that. What I'm saying is if it's a distraction. Right. If it's a distraction. You know, then we got to consider that. We have to consider that, Pastor. Um, so, you know, Can you see like, me? Even, when we, even when we even when we said before, Pastor, <laughs> even when I go out. Can you locally, see me, Pastor? I can't see you yet. I see you still froze. <laughs> Look here, I, 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 would, I just saw a comment, and I do apologize. Uh, M- M- Mother Rainford, she says, <laughs> she says so much, so much makeup, you can't, uh, you can't see who they are. You can't recognize them without all that makeup. I understand. I understand. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, right. That's it. And you know what, Pastor? Uh, she also said, Pastor wearing skinny jeans. You know, you said you had never seen a male, a male pastor wear skinny jeans. I had pulled one up. I seen one on on the um on the on a one of those like five minute uh, news spread. It was a, a, a pastor. He was a, a a nice sized man too. Had on some skinny jeans, Pastor. I'm trying. No, when I say skinny jeans, you can see his his kneecaps. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, say, God, I said, Lord, Lord, help him. I mean, listen, them things almost like biker shorts. He had them on, and I said, now he ought to know. I said, Lord, well, he don't know. He don't know no better. When you when you ain't got the right spirit, you don't know no better. <laughs> you don't know no better. So yeah, dress, uh, 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 sister, uh, crystal, crystal, um. She said, dress in order to draw attention to God's word, not to our bodies. That's amen. amen. And, that, and that's a female. That's a sister. Amen. Amen. That's a sister saying that. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Because, li- listen, at the end of the day, you know, uh, we, uh, we, I, 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 my body is for my wife and, and, and my wife's body is for me. It ain't for the, it ain't for the world. And, and what, what man, and, and I know, and I can speak for myself and I know Pastor Carl, what, what well, husband want another or want men hound uh, like 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 drooling over your wife because of what she got on? You know, I I was gonna I didn't have enough room on the on the on the flower poster, but that was a that was a that was a a a, 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 a minister that was a pastor a man that had married an actress and I forgot his name. I I was gonna try to put him on the flyer. He's a he's a pastor. But she, she's not, she's not a, she's not in the, you know, in the clergy. She's not uh, in men. She's an actress, and you know who she is, and I just can't think of her name. But she had on, man, you can see her cleavage. I mean, it was like one of those. She had on one of those, on those, uh, get those evening gowns on the on the carpet at an event that was the V came down like like almost down her stomach, and you see her boobs. And her her husband, the pastor, though. You know, and then she had another picture where she, her skirt came up way up past her th- her middle of her thigh, and and and, and cleavage out and, sh- and sh- back all out shoulders. She she Hollywood, and he's supposed to be the pastor. I mean, it just it just night and day. It just don't make sense. It's a distraction because therefore people gonna not count you serious if we if if we out here li- dressing like this and acting crazy as leaders. Now I'm not talking about those again. Cause I think I gotta make it clear. I'm not talking about those that without a title, 
that don't have anything to do, but they come in and get the word. I'm not talking about them. I'm t- talking about the ones that come out the street because God don't care about your clothes. He He want the, the spirit to be right. But guess what? If my spirit right, it's going to convict me just like he convicted me to stop cussing. It's going to convict me about what I got on. Come on. If, if I'm connected so the spirit will say, no, I need to take that off. I don't look good in that. You know, and, and a lot of time we, we don't take time to even look and see if it look right. We just slap it on and run up out the house. Go ahead, Pastor. Hey, Pastor, yeah, 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 yeah. That's her. That's her. Maybe. Yeah. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. She, man, I was like, I saw that and I was going to put it up there because, but then I said, no, you know, I ain't got enough room to put all that stuff up there. But this is, the, this is what I'm saying. How, how, how can, how can anybody believe that he's a man of God and she out here showing herself? You know, I'm just what I'm saying. It, 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 it don't match up. <laughs> it, it's, it's like, you know, what we see with Beyonce, you know, we, our little girls, Cannot cannot analyze cannot analyze and say that Beyonce is their idol or their mentor or somebody they look up to because of the way that she carries. I don't care how nice she smiles. I don't care how much money she got. I don't care how successful she we feel like she is. She is not a godly woman because she shows herself and carries herself uh, uh, continuously in that manner of the world. Go ahead, Pastor. Yeah, but see that here's the thing too. The influence of the world has infiltrated the church. Yeah. The church has compromised and we want to be like them. I mean That's what it is. Some of the stuff that I see some of I mean, I ain't gonna say it. I mean some stuff I seen Kirk Franklin where it was questionable. <laughs> I mean if I'm wrong, suspect. y'all y'all tell me. Suspect. But I seen Kirk Franklin, I'm like, you almost look just like the world. And I like Kirk Franklin. Right. I do. I like Kirk Franklin, but see, they gotta represent us better. Right. They can't. We can't just let. See, we don't. I don't. We don't need Beyonce. We don't need Rihanna. We don't need all these other jokers, Nicki. We don't need them. Listen, we don't need them to help us represent God. Right. Let's just go ahead and say we don't need the world to help us hey, because right. when, when we need when we need them to come into church like that, then we're not doing our job. That's it. We're not doing our job. When we need Nicki Minaj, who is a known trash mouth, a known sex, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Sexual individual who wear all kind of sexual stuff, talk about all kind of stuff. When we put these jokers in a gospel album and let them come in our church, y'all, it's something wrong with that. That's and it. we're going to get to the false prophets here in a minute because that goes right along with it. That's it. Because now, even with Tyler Perry, who y'all know, Oprah Winfrey, said that there's more than one way to get to God than Jesus. Right. She said that. She practices another religion. She do that meditating stuff. She does that. And she got millions of followers. Now, they let T.D. Jakes let her come to his church and speak in front of his people. Okay? That, help me out, y'all, because I could be wrong. I right. could be wrong. My thing is, there's enough people on this phone line and it's enough gospel people that people, we don't need their help. Right. We don't need their help, Pastor. You're coming in clear now, Pastor. But we don't need their help. Right. We, we don't need uh, one of these porn stars to come into church and speak up. You can give your testimony all day long. But, Pastor, we don't need the world to come into the church. We don't we need the drag queens. The we don't need the drag yeah. queens to come into the church. What, what is speaking. that? What is that? I, what is that? Man, Come I was on, I was I was I was out today, you know, and like I said, you know, it's a distraction. I was at a, at a local restaurant, you know, had my had my taste buds on something, and when I saw this individual, and I looked and I said, Lord, help them. And and I didn't want to sit there, and I was like, Lord, have mercy. I, when I say the full makeup. The brother had the full package of makeup, the eyelash, the what you call those eyeliners. He had everything on. It was such a distraction. I said, Lord have mercy. This is this is now not in the, the big cities, but spilling over in the little country towns. And I was like, this is this is the, the things that we talk about, and it's right here in our backyard. And we and, and people want us to accept it. Just like we supposed to accept the fact that leaders could basically Wear anything they want to wear, regardless, and if, and if it affects somebody, so what? We got to talk about it. We have to talk about it. Somebody said uh, Tyler Perry 
preaching at Joel Osteen Church. Well, I don't even look at Joel Osteen anymore. I've been done with him. And Tyler Perry laying hand on, on T.D. Jakes. I mean, laying hands on T.D. Jakes. And, and, and T.D. Jakes all in the spirit. Yeah, he was in the spirit. He picked up another a, a, a familiar spirit. That's what we call it, a familiar spirit. And it don't make sense. But I want y'all to share this on your Facebook page. Continue. We're going to continue to comment. Uh, please invite others to tune in. Amen. I want to say good evening to everyone. I was frozen for a moment. Amen. Brother Jason. Amen. Um, Sister Nicole. Amen. Y'all, if y'all are from another um, state, go ahead on and give your state shout out. Amen. But tonight, we're going to go ahead on and switch it right now. Uh, we talked about uh, what this next topic, man, it, it lines into everything that we're saying because not only is that 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 what we wear is a is a distraction, especially when it's out of out of order, you know, when it's too provocative or or, or too noticeable, you know, it's a distraction, it's a hindrance. Then another thing that's a hindrance and a distraction and and causing causing people to error, causing people to fall, is uh, the false prophets, the false teachers, false preachers. The the topic is the difference between God's chosen servants and the false prophets. There is a difference between God's chosen and then the false prophets. And, and, and at first, you know, uh, I want you to first, if anybody looked in that, uh, if anybody looked at the picture that I put up before, Pastor, did you see the the, 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 the flyer? Yeah, I, I seen it. Can you hear me, Pastor? Yeah, I hear you good. Okay, they say I got cut off. I don't know if you can see me or not. That they said I got cut off, so I don't know, but keep going. Yeah, you loud and clear, and, you, and you're moving. Yeah, listen. Okay, all right. Uh, the, that picture that I put up or for the for tonight had a had a, a guy and a woman together. He had on white, and, and the woman was uh, talking to him. Now, this is a prophet, or I say, let me even call him a prophet. Let me say false prophet. This is a false prophet that we've talked about on this show before, and his name is Joshua Holmes. And this woman, man, and I was looking at the video, Pastor, and I was looking at the video, and this woman was basically, she was saying that I, I, I feel, I've been watching you for a while. She was telling the false prophet this. I've been watching you for a while, and I, and I feel in the spirit that you are indeed Jesus in the flesh. And I tell you, right now, I almost lost, I almost blew a top. <laughs> because I said, now how blind is that? She don't call this false prophet Jesus in the flesh. Neither can he die and get up again, but he has no power. And by his name, nothing is bowing down. <laughs> so therefore, this, this is the trickery of the, of the enemy. The trickery of the enemy with these false prophets and false teachers out here. Uh, let me read a scripture and I'm going to give it to you, Pastor Carl. I want to read for y'all to know what the Bible is saying in Matthew, the 22nd chapter, verse 14. For many are called, watch this, but few are chosen. You understand what the Bible is saying? Many are called, but few are chosen. In other words, being called is that you are, are now understanding that there's a, an assignment, a duty, a task, that, that there's something God is calling you to. Amen. God had a calling on my life, but I had to, I had to act on the call. I had to, I had to throw away everything and act on the call. I have to die for the call. I have to believe without a shadow of doubt, regardless of hell and high water, that regardless of what attacks my way, I got to still be on task. You know, that's 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 when you're chosen. Amen. You know, you don't give up. You ain't got no tricks up your sleeve. You know, you you, you ain't got no agendas. You're not trying to set people up. You're not telling people a lie. You're not using the word for your benefit, you know, to twist it up. That's what is happening in the false prophet world. And now people are getting fooled. People getting fooled, y'all. Yeah, today, nobody wants a hard word, a strong word. Nobody wants the, the truth. But they want a prophetic. Everybody wants the prophetic word. 
You will run to Riley. You will go all the way to Greensboro. You will drive to Winston-Salem. You will go all the way to Charlotte. You, you will get your airplane and go to Dallas, Texas. You will go to Orlando, Florida. You will go to New York. You will ride down to Virginia. You go everywhere searching out for a prophetic word. And nine times out of ten, I ain't saying it's all, but it's a lot of uh, uh, wolves in sheep clothing. Because you can get you 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 can get a word right there where you at. You know the the thing about it when the prophet was sent, they got God sent them out. <laughs> they, you, they, the people didn't have to go searching. Let me go see if there's a prophet over here in this land. Let me go see if there's a prophet over here. Let me go over here and let me run over this land. Let me go on the ship and go over here and get a prophet. Let me find a prophet. I need a prophet. Let, where's a prophet? Everywhere is a prophet. And and people getting food. For many are called, but few are chosen. And I'm going to let Pastor Carl uh, continue, and I'm going to come back with some more. Okay, Pastor Carl, I mean, Pastor Nino, they saying that they can't see me, and I think you froze up, too. Oh, yeah, so, I am. I am. Okay. I, yeah, yeah. I what? don't know if they can still see me. Can y'all can y'all see me now, or I'm still froze? But um, while we're doing that, Pastor, um, I want to welcome in uh, my good friend, Joey Gaines, out in uh, Colorado. Uh, my good friend, uh, Mark, Mark, uh, Margaret Watkins, uh, my praise and worship leader, to my sister at the hospital, Lisa Hinton. Amen, amen. Uh, my good friend, um, Deacon Lewis Mary, who I was in ministry with in Virginia. Good evening to all y'all. We thank y'all for tuning in. Amen. amen. We thank y'all for tuning in. Um, so they sound we both froze, Pastor, but I'm I'm gonna keep on going because the devil will lie. We already know what it is. I already know. But I wanna read I wanna read something to y'all. I wanna read something to y'all. Um let me find it real quick. It says, A false prophet is one who falsely claims the gift of prophecy or divine inspiration. So they claim that they have the gift. <laughs> they claim it. Or, or, or who uses that gift for evil ends. So people, the, the false prophet will use their gift to manipulate people. Right. Okay. Often with someone who is considered a true prophet by, by other people. Right. So he's, like you said, the one lady said, see, they praising him high. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. But he, he, he's not, he's not a, uh, he's not a real prophet. He is a false prophet. He is a false prophet. Right. And they also say, uh, the false prophet preaches prosperity. Mm. False prophets preach prosperity. That's it. Okay. Um, uh, they, false prophets preach the gospel of prosperity. They preach the gospel of, of prosperity. So when you when you use the name of Jesus to get stuff, and I know that God said that we're supposed to be blessed. But right. I'm saying when that's your whole ministry, your whole ministry is manipulated. And see, I don't mind people getting blessed, like pastors and people who sell their books and people buy them or whatever. I'm talking about when you are a crook. Right. I'm not talking. I'm talking about when you are a crook. Right. Like you, you literally manipulating people. You literally using the gospel of Jesus Christ right. to manipulate people. The money lines. Get over on the you. money lines. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. The money lines. Uh huh. So we know that false prophets preach prosperity. Watch this. And here's the big one, people of God. And I want y'all to listen to this very clearly. False prophets refuse to call out sin. Yep. <laughs> They're not going to talk about sin. Mm -mm. We, don't want, we don't want you to sin. See, we want you to be comfortable right. in your sin. We want you to do stuff and be like, oh, God loves Jesus. Loves me. Yes, I know. Right. Kumbaya. That's what they want. Because right. why? A false prophet... A false prophet know that preaching sin gonna cause him members. Right. Because what it, what the Bible says, they want their itchy ears scratched. Right. People want people want their itchy ears scratched. Uh, pastor, they don't they don't want to hear that. They don't right. want to hear about you going to hell. Right. What I want to hear about is if I get this hundred dollars in this money line, I'm getting a new plane. Right. I'm gonna get a new Bentley. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, what the Bible says in Romans three and twenty three. For all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. Right. So we all sin. So don't don't act like you don't sin. Don't act, everybody, we were born in sin. Right. So we got to talk about it and we got to let it know. So here's the thing of two pastors. I'm going to say this and then I'm going to get back over to you. False prophets don't believe in hell or that you need repentance. 
What did I just say about Oprah? She said there's more than one way to get to heaven than right. through Jesus. Right. No, there's not. Right. No, there's not. Okay, no, there's not. Okay. <laughs> you, they, see, they don't they don't want to they don't preach hell. It, it, because it, when it, people yeah. hear hell, it can said, you. said it too. <laughs> yeah, when, when 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 you look in the mirror, when people look in the mirror, uh -huh. they want to see that happy face. Right. I want to be able to still smoke weed, drink fornicate, commit adultery, and I don't want you to say nothing about it. Right. This is the truth. This is the truth. I I, you know why? You know why I know it's the truth, y'all? Because I used to do that. Right. I used to do it. And guess what? I did not was wrong with it. Right. But when the scales fell off my eyes, yes, hallelujah. Sir. Yes. When the scales fell off my eyes, and I came into the understanding of the knowledge of the Lord, Yes. Hallelujah. He showed me. So if you still doing this stuff and you going to church, I'm not saying that you got you got you don't you're not um you're not a good person. But what I'm saying is you can't be doing this stuff and think that it's not wrong. How about you? You don't want right. to say that. When, when you we, can't do that. Right. Hey man, go ahead, Pastor. Get in there. Hey, what I was gonna say, you know, is is that they are not bad people. It is it the the prop the point is that they stop their growth. They're stopping the blessing. They're hindering their own blessing, their own increase, their own elevation, because they are in. A, they they continue to stay in a place. Now, when I want to say and I want to rewind back to talking about the ones that are, are chosen. You know, what I'm saying like many people call, but few are chosen, and the few are chosen. The price is hard. You know, what I'm saying the price is hard. We get attacked all the time. Those that are chosen get attacked. They get talked about. They get their name get scandalized. You know, it's always something. The enemy attack their family. It's always something. The Bible says, let me read to you with Matthew 7 and 13. It says, enter ye in a, at the straight gate. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is a gate and broad is a way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in there. Verse 14, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth into life, a few there be will find it. Now, the Bible also say, beware of false prophets. Right after that, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raven, raven wolves. That's it. That's the word of God. See, now. The, the ones that are that are chosen is not going to try to set you up. And and here's what they do. And y'all see it on TV. And y'all y'all know y'all see it. Uh, I'm I'm hearing the Lord. They they get to talking. They get to holding their mind. You see them, Pastor. Uh uh, I hear the Lord saying to me, "There's somebody is about to lose their home. Their 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 house is about to go into foreclosure. They they they, they about to lose your home." Uh, and, I, I, and then they say, I'm, I'm hearing the voice of the Lord say, if you, if you will sow a $150 seed, he's going to release that financial blessing and you won't lose your home. That's the first thing they say. God, you already about to lose your home and you think God going to give you your last and you only know what you're going to do. I mean, that, God don't operate like that, y'all. I'm telling you, that's, that's false. God don't operate like that. I'm telling y'all the truth. I'm telling y'all the truth. He don't operate like that. Special, he don't operate. He don't operate like that now. They, they are false. They are they are sending false hope because then they say, well, if you send that, then after they say that, they're gonna say, uh, what we gonna do? If you sow that hundred fifty dollars seed, we're gonna send you this. We're gonna send you this oil. We're gonna send you this this anointing oil. It's from the Holy Land. All this stuff that they got, all these gadgets and trinkets and stuff. These are liars. These are these are the raging wolves that the Bible is speaking about. And we got to be careful. We got to be careful. And and so beware of false prophets. They come and see clothes. And so therefore, you know, again, they can dress the part, but they be, they they far from it. You know, how how can how how do you think the prophet the prophet wanna come in there and and see you just die hungry and they can help you? If I can help somebody, I want to help somebody. If I can help somebody, Pastor, and I know you like that, I'm gonna try to help them. But guess what? So many people out here, they take, they take, they take, they take, they take. Uh, you know, if somebody asked me to come down to Atlanta to preach, and I say, well, okay, I can come, but it's going to take $35,000 for me to come. What kind of man is that? What kind of man is that? What kind of man is I to say, 
uh, I'll come, but I need thirty five thousand. Or 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 locally, somebody say, well, how much you charge? I mean, where did they get that from? I've been asked, and I know pastor been asked. You know, you go to, go. Somebody want you to come to their church, and the first thing they ask you, what what do you charge? Like, what do I charge? <laughs> <laughs> What do I charge? I say, I don't charge anything. The word of God is free. I, then I tell him, I said, now, if you want to bless me with food, bless me to eat, or, you know, put some gas in the car, that's fine. But the word of God is not for sale. <laughs> mm -mm. Amen. Mm -mm. The, the, listen, because of the anointing of Paul and Silas, they, 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 they folk want that. They wanted that anointing. What are they going to cost? I got it. I give it to you. I give you all I got to have what you got. I want to be able to see. I want to be able to do the things you do. I love it. It, it, you can't buy it. <laughs> you can't buy it. And so, therefore, we see that all of these prophets, prophets come into town, and they want to lead. They're gonna lead you astray. And now, everybody, the prosperity ministries is booming. That is good business, Pastor. <laughs> That's a business now. You know, to tell pe tell people the lies. But I'm gonna go to a question. And I get back to you. It says, uh, Minister Minister Miles said that uh, God's word don't change, but it should change our mindset. That's true. It should change that mindset. And and the people that are stealing and robbing from the people and, 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 and they doing it without no conscience, they, they, they don't they don't they don't they don't think about that woe. God said, Woe unto them that caused my sheep to stray. God said, Woe unto them. That that woe, man, is death. <laughs> that woe, <laughs> hellfire. That that woe comes with a lot. So yeah, that word don't change and that word should change the mindset. And then she said, if leaders are dressing like the world and the members are looking at them, then they are going to do the same. And, and it ain't going to be no change. In it. it ain't going to be no change. Because guess what? Even though they might not be there, they're going to say, well, you know what? We, we ain't judging nobody. We Lord, no, we ain't. But guess what? They might slip up and say, you know what? They come, they feel good. They get a message for the day. And they go back out. They go to the club with the girl. The girl said, come on, girl. It's going to be all right. Come on and hang around. I don't want to go by myself. And you go out. And then and the same stuff, you you go to church, you can go to the club. And that's, a, that's, that's that, that. Now, come on now. So there ought to be, there ought to be something different. We ought to, we ought to be different. It, it, so be so tight. Pastor, any, any more comments I missed? Yeah, I want to go down to, and I hope I said her name right, uh, Jalicia, Jalicia Waverly. She said, people don't want the truth. They want to feel good. Godly people want truth, correction, and to be blessed by God. That's true. I, I want the truth, whether it hurt or not. I don't want to walk around here thinking I'm right when I'm wrong. Right. And then I stand before God on that day, and guess what? I'm going to hell. Right. Uh, Minister Miles says they don't speak against sin because uh, people will leave and take, and take their money with them. True fact. If a person is a big sower, if a person is a big sower, and they still on thousand dollar seeds. Oh, some pastors gonna pamper them. Ain't but what you're right. doing is you actually you lead them down, you lead them to hell. Right. Uh, James Hill says false prophets will teach that the uh, that that uh, that God loves us. Oh, we shouldn't be listening to messengers. Oh, let me finish bringing this up. Like like you brothers on this show, basically brothers who are uh, telling the truth. Uh huh. Uh. Let me see who else. A uh, mirror we say, but some people uh, do be charging. So she talking about some people do be do be charging people. <laughs> <laughs> some hey. some pastors do like what I told you. Right. Uh, they, uh, one one lady says she can't a uh, pastor won't come down there unless she give him like three thousand dollars. Right. Um, Jesse Barnett uh, says the Lord the Lord only ever asks for you to repent. So he could clean you uh, white as snow. That's right. That's right. And some of them saying the video still, but we but we going for it. Y'all y'all already know what it is. Y'all already know what it is. Cause I just got the brand new iPhone 10 XS Max. Hey, so look. there ain't no way my phone messing up. It's, it's Facebook, man. Face, <laughs> Facebook, man. They, listen, Be, Beyonce got control of Facebook, and they don't want us talking about. <laughs> they don't want us talking about them. But listen, but would you go ahead, Pastor? Go but, ahead. But I want to I want to share something because, like I said, we we not saying not to take care of the men and women of God, true men and women of God. Mm -hmm. We are not saying that. Now, let's. Mm -hmm. I do want to. I will want to bring to your attention that that we supposed to take care of the leader, the elders, the you know the the men of God, the women of God. Yes, we do. We do things, and this is what the scripture says. See, we go by the scripture, we won't be wrong. All right, Galatians six and six. 
It says, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whoever a man soweth, that shall he reap also. So again, and I know we're talking about the flesh here in this in this passage, but let him that that is taught in the in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. So we're going to communicate these these things. This is where I want to get to you tonight because you know we got the the Bible says honor those that labor among you. So 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 him that is teaching in 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 in, in, in good things. See, not 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 trickery. You know, and that's what the problem is. We got we got people teaching in the trickery of things. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we see. You know, people. I believe that that yeah, I believe that 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 a that a servant is 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 worthy of of, of his wages. I understand that. You know, and the men of God back in the day, they didn't have to they didn't have to want for nothing. You know, when the when the priest came, the priest had his own room. See, we you know we can't stay in your house today. You can't give us a room room in your in your house like back in the day. Set us up a little table with a counter so we can you know study the word and relax and eat and all that. We, you ain't doing it today. So therefore, that's when you come. You you go, if you got to go out of town and you want to bless somebody with with you know food for the weekend and and hotel stay. All right. Cause see, they did that in the back in the day. They gave them the the the, uh, the buggy. They gave them a, a a mule to ride. You know they, you know. So so they took care of the of the man of God. But here's here's what's what's happening. Because they lying in the first place, they taking all your money, and 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 they said in in ten days you're gonna get that blessing. In ten days, I want you to look in that mailbox. You're gonna get a check. 10 days, 20 days, 40 days, 60 days, 80 days, 100, 110, 120, 360. They done, how many days done came by and you still ain't got that check in the mailbox? <laughs> so therefore, that was a false prophet lying to you because he told you to sow $100 and that was all you had and, and you didn't have no discernment and you went right there. And I'm not saying it's all because there are some people are right on it. But at the same time, you know, where do we get off, Pastor? I don't know where we get off of saying, you know, you you give this, you give this money because it's always about money. So you give this money in order for you to get some. God said that if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and you got to turn away. <laughs> That's the whole key of God blessing you. Turn away from your wicked ways. You got to seek His face. Then He's going to hear from heaven. He's going to heal the land. He's going to heal the land and everything that you do in the land is going to be blessed because you had a turning away. That's how you get blessed. Not not because uh, you stood in a $100 line, a $50 line, a $20 line, a $30 line and all that all that mess. That's mess. That's that's not that's not scripture. And so therefore, we we are fool. But I want to get uh two more scriptures. I'm going to get back to Pastor Carl. Pastor Carl, you got any comments you want to read while I'm getting the scripture? Uh yeah, um uh, uh, Minister Miles said, uh, no, God don't work like that. But God said, if you're willing and obedient, we will eat the good of the land. Yeah. Tithes and offering will cause God to move on your behalf. Right. People are looking for shortcuts. Shortcuts, that is so true. People want a shortcut. Yeah. But they're only being this out is good. They deceived by the wolves in sheep clothing. And then when the false prophecy don't come to the past, they blame God. Oh, that's good. Yes. That's good right there. That's exactly what happens. All right. That's exactly what happens. They want shortcuts. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They want the but microwave. They, they don't get the blessing. Yeah, now, mm -hmm. like, yeah, they want the mic. Like, like Pastor Tammy preached a sermon and said, um, I don't want a microwave blessing. I want a crock pot blessing. <laughs> yes, Meaning, sir. Uh -huh. You got to simmer. You got to lay out. You got to do your part for the Lord. Right, right, hey, man, That right. was good. Um, I like that, yeah. Um, James Harris said, um, uh, Mike Murdoch and Jim Baker, a new generation of uh, uh, of uh, people, I guess, who deceive. Uh, he said we need to start calling out these pastors. What we do, he said. Paul the apostle called them out. Uh huh. And, and uh, Christ called out the false teacher. So that's good too. Yeah. So, so we ain't the only ones doing it. And when I talk about so real, ones doing it. hey, hey, and that's what I noticed. When you talk about real stuff, people don't like it. People come against you. And, and here's the thing. 
this is what I had, you know, uh, when I was trying to talk to my pastor, bless her soul, you know, I respect her as a leader. She was my pastor, you know, and I, and I, we had disagreements because I, I, we had children in the youth department. They wanted to sing, but you couldn't instruct them because they kept playing. They kept talking. They was on their phone. And I was one that's one, you know, one to tell them, say, look, you got to put the phone away. You got to do this because we ain't going to sit here all day and practice and y'all not knowing what to do. You got to pay attention. But, 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 but the people or some of that, especially some of the older ones, they felt like if I said that to them, it was discourage them and they won't want to come and sing. Listen, and then we got those that, that praise dance. If you praise dance, guess what? If you don't tell them the truth, guess what? You, you can sugarcoat stuff and you can not address their, their stuff in their life regardless they praise dance. Guess what? If you tell them or not tell them, they're going to go out here and do it. They're going to go out here and be in the flesh. They're going to hang around folk. They're going to try this and try that. I'm guaranteed. So whether you whether you want to give in, because if you give in, guess what? They still going to go out here and mess up. You can, In other words, I'm saying, you go out here and want to have everything like, like the world for your, your young people. Because you say, you know what? We want to do all this stuff. We want to have everything. We're going to get this music artist. We're going to get Beyonce. We're going to get Nicki Minaj. We're going to get, we're going to get all these artists. Because we want, we want our young people to have fun and enjoy church. That's what they say, enjoy church. But guess what? At the end of the day, they still going to go out here. You're going to get them all the ice cream, cake, cookie, pie, and they still going to go out here and be hard headed They're going to still go out here and make mistakes. So you better tell them the truth while, you know, tell them the truth. And, and, and even if they mess up, at least they can remember the truth that you told them. Say, so you know what? I, I, I remember that they told me that this wasn't right. Versus my pastor let us do whatever we do. We do. We do. He, 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 I, shoot. Hey, what they say, pastor. Our pastor is lit. <laughs> That's what they say. Uh-huh. Our pastor is lit. <laughs> oh, he off the chain. Oh, our pastor. What, what, what did he talk about today? What sermon did he preach? Where, what book he come from? I don't know, but I tell you right now, he he showed off today. <laughs> he showed off, pastor. He Amen. showed off. That's the that's what they say. So so the world wants you to continue to be like the world. See, the world want their spokesperson. The world want their their leader. <laughs> and that's what happened when you give in. You giving them exactly what they want. Now, I, like I said, I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm not um, one that that worry about what people dress. You know, I'm, because because at the end of the day, you can dress with a hat on. You can have stockings all the way up to your navel. Those dresses in the flesh will still rise up, and, and, and as well as those pants will will come down. So let's just keep it real. So therefore, you got to be steadfast, unremovable. Amen. Always attending to faith. Amen. Always, always. And, and yield to the temptations. He, the Bible didn't say that we won't be tempted because Jesus was tempted after he was fasting. God know we were going to be tempted. Amen. He know that, you know what, you might love certain uh, characteristics of uh, 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 women when you was out there in the world and then you say, so now he see what you want to do. The spirit going to try you. Satan going to try you. Satan going to say, God, I guarantee you, if, if, if you care that woman over there, that, that, like they used to like them, uh, they they gonna give in and they ain't gonna they ain't gonna do they not gonna worship you now they not gonna praise you if you go let go over there send that woman and see won't they do it <laughs> so we got to yield to the temptation not saying that that you know we we won't be tempted because guess what you can be tempted and even in the very act but guess what in the very act you say you know this ain't right I'm not gonna do this I'm not gonna do this I'm not gonna do this we not married I'm not gonna do this I'm not gonna do this I don't feel right I don't feel comfortable I'm not gonna do this you yielded it to the temptation you yielded and therefore it pleased God because you felt that you knew something in your spirit you said no I can't do it and you was right in the act of doing it you done took everything off and get ready to do it but yet you your spirit said yield and you yielded and God was pleased at that See what I'm talking about? Go ahead, Pastor. Hey, man. Hey, hey, let me read this by uh, my good brother, J.C. Kelly. He said, we need to start teaching the word so we can get a true understanding instead of emotional stimulation. And I talked about emotion. That's right. I, I preached about emotion. People, when, when you get emotional, people confuse emotion with the anointing or the spirit of God. Right. People confuse that. Let me tell you what emotion is. You at work, right? Uh-huh. And you um or you know, and you do a good job. And your boss coming in and say, Oh, you did a great job. 
Oh, you you one of my best workers. That make you feel good. So you get emotion, and it make you feel good. Right. You know what I'm saying? Your boss came in and told you you did a good job, Pastor. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And you wanted his best. That made you feel good, but it was emotion. That wasn't the anointing. Right. Look, the, the anointing, because he didn't probably want to even say it. Right. You see what I'm saying? So that was emotion. Right. The anointing, watch this. Now, people, the anointing will confirm itself. Right. Just like uh, Minister Miles said, when it don't happen, then it wasn't God. Right. The anointing, the anointing will confirm. But I know people, people get emotional. Matter of fact, it's easy to manipulate people when they're emotional. Right. Because guess what? This is how they use their gift. Right. Because realistically, I can do it if I really wanted to. Mm-hmm. I can pray on people really if I really wanted to, Pastor. Right. You will see a person, right? Right. And you can see, like they say, written all over their face. That they down and out. That they ain't doing too good. And you will walk up there to them and you will use that. You will try to get them emotional. Right. You will say stuff to try to pep them up. Right. You, you will say, oh, God loves you. Huh? I see such and such a thousand dollars coming your way. And mm-hmm. you, what will happen is you, you will play on their emotion right. and they'll get happy. Right. Oh, I'm going to tell you right now. There's a blessing with your name on it. All you got to do is put $20 in here. And all oh my goodness, I'm telling you, the floodgates about to open up. Amen. Oh, man, them jokers so down and out. They want something. So guess what? He done prayed on their emotion. Because God wasn't in none that he said. That's it. So uh, Jason is very right. Jokers can get um, jokers get emotional in the church. I like that. Jok- I heard some people get emotional when they pray. So they are pray, and all the stuff that they've been going through throughout the day, it'll come out in the prayer, Pastor. Oh, and I know such and such is, <laughs> oh, and she the only one who loves me, and all oh, these man. You that's that is so true, man. Right, I preached right. a sermon on emotion, right? So I I, I know that that's and emotional true. and emotional. I know that that's true. And, and also, and, past- um, go ahead. And also, pastor, you know, we talking about emotional. You know, so many people get emotion versus you know when it when it comes to truth, they get emotional. They want to you know I want to call the truth wrong. <laughs> we, that's emotion. When you get emotion <laughs> too emotional, you call truth wrong. And that's what happened. That's what happens so so often, you know. Right. And not only, not only. Hey, hey pastor, uh-huh. pastor, Go let ahead. me just say this. This is why I'm laughing. Go ahead. I'm laughing. Minister Chris said the boss lying anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so he just. <laughs> but it ain't and you you got to have good discernment of it because you know we we see it now the change of the what the enemy is doing is saying that profit now uh can be homosexual <laughs> you know you, you mm-hmm. got a, pro- a man say he a prophet but he a homosexual he love me and he, he got this private life but you can read them they ain't no prophet they, they ain't no prophet they ain't no prophet and, 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 and those that call themselves pastors, apostles, and teachers, and, and and you not what God created, you feel like you something else. You a liar. You you are you are manipulating folk to, to, to try to believe a lie because of who you think somebody told you you was something you ain't. That's what that's what it boils down to. That's exactly what it boils down to. Praise God. This is go, going off good. Amen. Y'all y'all both are, are back on now. Our God reign. Amen. Uh, but yeah, uh, this stuff right here, what we talking about tonight, man, is so real. You know, we got to get back to teaching the truth. If you, if you say, I love the word. I love the word. I love praise and worship. I, I tell people that everywhere I go, I, I love to sing praises unto God. I love to 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 just worship Him. But I love that word better than, than any kind of singing. In you know, all of the guitars, the drums. I love the word, man. If you're preaching and teaching that word, man, I tell you, that, 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 that sounds of, of music right there in my ears. The scripture is the, is the, is the trumpet. 
amen, the violin, the, the words of God is, is that the, the running waters, and it sounds so good. And that's what, that's, when you love the word, amen, you, you, you know, you love truth. You know, and, and a lot of times, see, people really want the truth, and we got to give it to them because people has then 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 sugarcoated the word so much. This is why we in the position we are because our four four pastors, not all, but many, many four pastors before gave in when they used to talk back in the day when I was a child. I remember the preacher preaching hell fire brimstone and and and, and you going to hell if you didn't do this and you bachelor and come on in because <laughs> y'all y'all don't might not remember. But back in the 70s, late 70s and early 80s, when you call somebody a backslider, it's almost calling them a nasty cuss word. <laughs> I mean, people would took offense. They said, what you say to me? When they, they call you backslider, they, well, they had to fight you to death. But now you can call somebody a backslider. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, woo And that's, you know, but it was a different because they knew that even because they were wrong, and they didn't want to hear that they was a backslider because they knew that they was doing wrong. And, and they and, and there was a point and points of time that they took the, the word of God so seriously that when you said somebody was backslider, you you about to be ready to fight. <laughs> you had to fight. <laughs> but the truth is the word, the word of God has set you free. You know, and, and, and the people somebody said it earlier. Who was it? Uh Sister Jalisha? That 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 that, that people not preaching the word, the truth of the word no more. And, and, and there's people out here, they looking for people to treat them the truth. Because these people that want the truth, guess what? They want more knowledge. They want more wisdom. They want more of God to speak to them. They want that that stronger relationship with God. They want to please God. They want to work in the kingdom. They want to do the things of God. This is the people that want the truth. The people that don't want the truth, they love to, to have uh, one foot in the ice cream and, and one foot in the in the cold fire. <laughs> this is this this what this will go on. And so therefore they they, 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 like, like I always say, there are some that just go to church on Sunday because it's Sunday. Oh, well, I guess it's Sunday. Let me just go today. That don't mean now when you go right, leave the church and go right to the food line and go get a case of 24 beer and go get drunk before you get home. And then you want to sleep around right at, You left church. Ain't nothing, there, won't nothing there. And that's another thing. What are they preaching in these churches, past? Some of them, not all of them. Let me, let me make that clear. Cause somebody go take, take words out my mouth. Not all churches, but what are some of these churches teaching today? They 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 don't even they they they, they don't even feel no spirit, and what they feel is a emotion. Uh oh, that's what that's it, Pastor. That's some of the churches, some of them traditional churches. They go there and say, "Oh, the spirit was moving today," and everybody sitting like a knot on the log. You's a liar. Mm-hmm. You a liar. If the Holy Ghost is operating, somebody be crying in there, somebody waving their hands in the house, somebody might be laid on the floor, somebody standing up. When the spirit moves, it's evident. But jokers are sitting around there like a knot on the log, like they watch a TV at home, chilling. And, and they say, oh, it was a it was fire in the house today. Where was the fire at? It was the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost move. The, when the Holy Ghost move, it's so powerful that I can't stay still. It's so, it's the anointing so righteous that I can't I can't stay still. I can't stop moving. Good God. Yes. Well, guess, that, what, guess what that is, Pastor? Huh? Guess what that is? Go ahead. And you and you talk about it often. Guess what that is? That's tradition and religion. That's it. My grandmother sat in this seat. Yep. This my seat. Yep. This my seat. Um. If, if, okay, if, like what you say, if you ain't done preaching in 20 minutes, we're going to play the organ. Right. Okay? Everything is lined up. So so what they've done is they they programmed the church so much that they programmed the spirit out. Man. There, there ain't no room for the spirit to move. And God said you were. no room. He, he, because you didn't, you didn't <laughs> usher the spirit out. Because you didn't. Because no. what you always say, Pastor, uh-huh. the deacon board running it. Yep. So the deacon board. Mm. Is, is holding the pastor accountable for the tradition and the religion to what the fact is that the pastor he can't even do what God told him to do. And guess what? So now I'm the I'm, I'm the I'm the shepherd. I'm the shepherd. I'm the one who's supposed to have the vision imparted in me. But the vision imparted into the deacons who still smoke uh and drink they probably go outside and drink a little wine. They li- they drink the liquor. Some deacons don't do that, but some deacons do program the pastor and lean on him. 
when he got to do certain things. So now, if he want to keep his job, now I got to do what the deacon say. Now right. I got to do what the mother said. Right. You see what I'm saying? So now, ain't no room for the spirit to move. Right. Because of tradition. This is how we've been doing it for 450,000 years. I was doing this when, when Mary had a little lamb came in here. Amen. You see? So they don't... So now, when you don't get the spirit Man. room to move, you are going to have a dead church. Right. Because guess what? If the atmosphere is not right, just like atmosphere, right? Right. Atmosphere controls conditions of the weather, right? right? So if you got a hot atmosphere, you're going to have heat and you're going to sweat. Yeah. When you have a cold atmosphere, mm. it's going to be snow and ice. Right. When you have a dead church atmosphere, people not going to get delivered. Right. That's why they can't get delivered because the atmosphere ain't gone and killed. You talking, down. boy? You talking. So the atmosphere yes, sir, is so jacked up that people sitting there looking at each other on their phone. You and they're moving it. to God. Yes, sir. And you know why? Because your atmosphere. Pastor. Y'all mm. came up there and sang the same traditional song. That one that one mother, she's going to give up. She's going to get up and give that same testimony. Oh, what Steve Harvey said. Oh, I went to church and they gave me a receipt back. Oh, I took my clothes back and they <laughs> gave me back. I had my, yeah. Well, how about I got up out the wheelchair testimony? Mm. How about I came off drugs testimony? You ain't hearing none of them testimony. You hearing about, oh, uh, they let my, uh, and it's probably a good testimony, but uh, they let my son out of jail. Mm. Oh, well, why did your son go to jail? Right. Okay, so this 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 get real about this, right. man, because this stuff is, like, amusing to me sometimes. Me and my wife went to a church, right? It was so cold, and I, it was quiet. Uh, I'm like, why is church quiet? Right. I'm like, what in the world is what in the world is going on? Now let me tell you when the church got moving, when it was a Father's Day or something like that. Right. And they said, <laughs> well, we we uh we want people to come up here and show a donation on their father. Right. So when they did that, yeah, everybody got up then. Hey, look. But other than that, <laughs> nobody wasn't praising. No spirit was moving. Right. I'm looking at my wife. I'm like, man, I like eating steak and prime rib. Right. I'm around this junkie eating a bowl of cereal right. up in this joker. Right. For me, and I, I don't know who said it, but a couple of them said it uh, on the line tonight. They said true Christians will live the word. We want the word. We want correction. I want to hear. I want to hear Pastor Nino tell me, you know what, Pastor Carl? You know, I love you, right? But maybe you shouldn't have said that on the show tonight. Uh, and I tell Pastor Nino, Pastor Nino, you know what? Maybe we did cross the line somewhere. We got to be truthful with each other. Yes. We got to be true. That, so it. we hold each other accountable. Yes. And we want like y'all to hold yeah. us accountable. If, if we say something that y'all don't agree with, y'all better tell us. Don't hold back. Y'all better. We, we got to hold each other accountable. We got to hold each other accountable. I don't know everything. Right. Pastor Nino don't know everything. Amen. We are not the only people that serve God and God talked to on his line. Right. Amen. Amen, ahead, Pastor. Pastor. Amen, Pastor. And you know, uh, I saw Minister uh, <coughs> Minister Chris. God bless you, sir. He said, right, uh, because they shout and dance, but they truly, they don't truly worship God. Amen. You know, worship and praise is different. When I praise God. Amen. When I go into a shout of praise, that ain't worship. When I, but when I go into a, a spiritual realm, amen, hallelujah. When, I, when I'm meditating, amen, that, that's worship, amen. When I'm, when I'm really connected in the spirit, and I might not even move, but I just might just bow down. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just think about his goodness. That's worshiping him. Amen. I ain't got to be jumping around and, and doing the electric slide and all that stuff, which, you know, hey, that's what you want to do, do it. But, but you know what? Again, they are the traditional churches, these, these religion. Like Pastor said it, man, I, sw I, I swear, man, I, Pastor, I, Claire, I couldn't say it no better. They, got the, they don't even get to do the vision of, that God give them, but yet, because they're hell hostage to the board, they can't go in and look at all the stale stuff that's been doing, that's the way they be doing it, the program, and they can't even go by the spirit because the, the board run the church. And then not only that, but you turn around and think about something else you said. Uh, there's no movement. See, I ain't, now look, ain't no movement in the church. You go, you go there, and they, and 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 and, and here's the thing: when I look at you on on the male anniversary service, 
Boy, them, them men, boy, they lining up looking good with them suits on, boy. They got the new ties. Oh, man, them boogers are dressed up. Boy, they open that back church door, boy, and they get to moving. They marching down, but they can't even move in church. They can't even say amen to the word. They can't even stand up and say, God, I thank you this day. I, I understand what you're saying to me. But you see them moving and humping down there on, on anniversary day. Oh, man, it's a big day. And Father's Day. Oh, yeah. And Mother's Day. Oh, yeah. We, but you know what? <laughs> That's just tradition. <laughs> amen. You know what? I, I, and I'm not trying to say, cause, you know, we ain't, we ain't, we ain't trying to compare no ministry, but we, what we, we, we what we see and we talking about now, now last Sunday, pastor David spoke boy, And there was, there was a move of God because the word was hot. The Sunday after that, I was there. You was there as the moderator. We, uh, we, man, listen, we didn't want no music played, man, played. And we, we, you know, only during the time, but when the word came, boy, the word was fire. That word stirred us up on the inside because I even got happy because of the word. That's when you know the word is good. Hey, man, it ain't about no organ playing because, like you said, uh, as long as they got an organ and a keyboard and a drum and a, and, a, and a guitar, they can get up and they can praise. But when that word come up, they can't never stand up and say, Glory be to God. Amen. It is so. Every word that's being preached, I'm, I'm feeling good because that word is on time. That word is right. That, that word is talking to me. Amen. They can't, they don't even testify. They don't even say no amen. They don't even say amen. They, you, you, boy, I'm trying to tell you. See, that's the tradition of the church. And, they, they, and that's when, when boy, the boy has took over and, 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 uh, you know, they not follow the spirit and therefore healing can't come, come in the church. It's no way in the world. If I got a past a, a leadership, a leadership team as a pastor and one of my leaders on my team have been sick and shut in and going through and they first time back, I don't, I don't call them up to lay hands and pray on, pray on them continue to pray and I know they're going through I can read them I can feel their spirit and their spirit is dragging their spirit is hurt their spirit is down they're going through this this issue and yet oh you you don't even call them up to pray on you don't call them lay your hands on say nothing because of, of the of the program oh my god the program is killing the church the program you got to you got to have the discerning spirit to be able to 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 see through spiritual eyes in there who needing to pray this, that spirit will direct you sometimes to call out folk, and then sometimes the spirit will give them to get out the seat and come. That's how you got that. You know what I'm saying? Jesus went to those that were sick, those that were shut in. He went to those mm-hmm. sinners. He went to the publicans. He went to the people that was that was left like they was nothing. He went in and, and checked on old Lazarus. He went to Lazarus. <laughs> he went over there to the to the daughter that was sick. He went. He went to the man at the tomb. The man tuned in, come to him. He went to the man. But then there's sometimes, like the woman with the issue of blood, she went to Jesus. Good God Almighty. Amen. So it how, see how it operate? You see how it flow? There's sometimes that the, that the people going to come to you and say, I, I need prayer. I was telling this, and I'm, I'm going to get it back to Pastor. There was this, uh, this sister of mine, a uh, high school classmate, and she has put on the page that this girl at, uh, at Walmart needed prayer. And asked her to pray for, and she said, "I pray for I'm a I pray for you," but didn't pray right then. So I inboxed her because I didn't want to put it on the comments. All the comments was up there, and I said, "You know, I don't, you know." I inboxed her and I asked her, "Was it any way possible that she could have prayed for her then?" And and I then explained why because if somebody asks you to pray, that means that, if, especially like at Walmart, and one of the Walmart workers asks you, that means that they need it now. And sometimes, you know, and sometimes, you know, we say, uh, I've, I've made the mistake and say, you know what, I'll pray for you and forget. And, th- and then I, I was like, Lord, for- or, oh, I forgot to pray. Lord, forgive me. But see, when you do it right then, when somebody asks you right then, you, you go right then because guess what? It, 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 it's needed right now. That person might need it to hear the words of prayer right then. Amen. You know, they don't know if you really pray for them and they still feel the same way in their condition because they're not sure because they didn't hear you pray. But I told her if it's anywhere possible, because guess what? It might be something in that prayer that she would have heard. Amen. That, that would have blessed her. That would that would help her in her condition, her condition or situation right then praying. 
And so therefore, you know, can't wait till you get home because she can't hear the prayer. You know, a lot of times we get too busy. Now I'm saying, you know, I, I, you know, you just have to follow the spirit. You know, and I remember just like Pastor Carl and myself, man, needed prayer. We prayed right there, and right there by the potato chip aisle in the store. You know what I'm saying? We prayed right there in the name of Jesus over that brother. And I'd have done it many times and over. You know, uh, one of the brothers that one of the brothers that live over where I met when I first got there, one early one Saturday morning, I I was unlocking the door and coming in. They had to work early. And as I was coming in, they said, hey, man, listen, can you pray for me? And I grabbed that brother's hand and prayed right there in that hallway because there's a need. You know what I'm saying? So so, so you got to, you got to go right then. You got to go right then. You can't say, well, yeah, I'm going to pray for you. Go, go on and do it right then. Amen. Go on and do it right then because you never know what people need. And, 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 and when you, I, I don't like the program because, Pastor, it, it stunts growth. Program stunts growth. You got so many traditional churches, Pastor, Singing out the same hymn book they've been singing, which I like hymns, but you singing hymn number 43, and you've been singing hymn 43 for 53 years, and you grabbing the book. You know it by heart. I go to this, some of these churches. I ain't got to look at the book because I already know the song. 43, page 43, 1, 113, uh, hymn 12. I, I know it. <laughs> so I know these hymns. I ain't got to get the book because that's all y'all see. It, 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 it's it's 500 pages and you you just seen the same one and the same thing, the same testimony. God, just he, listen, God do m multiple things all the time. Ain't no way in the world I got to give the same testimony that, that oh, every Sunday? <laughs> Come on, every Sunday I'm saying the same thing for 20 years? What else God do? God just did that one thing for me? Come on now. No. -uh. No. And so... You get in a condition. You get in a condition. I, I call them church wa uh, clock watchers. <laughs> I call them clock watchers because I when I when I went, before I went to a, a, a Pentecostal church, <laughs> I was you know I was in this, in this uh, <laughs> denomination, and uh, I grew up as a kid watching the older people. And when it got to a certain time, everyone that sat over in the the board section looked at the time. On the clock, cause they were saying preacher preaching too much. It's time to sit down. <laughs> I watched. I watched in the old church that when the when the when the man was playing the piano, start playing the music. That was the key for the pastor to stop talking. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I was a kid that was observant a long time, and then so you know when I went to this Pentecostal church when I moved away from here. The pastor, a bishop, my bishop, he didn't get up to start preaching until one o'clock, and I was like, I was like, man, he just started to preach at one o'clock, and I was looking at my clock. I was like, good gracious, we, he, he just getting up right now. It's time to go. I was with the clock watcher and didn't even know it, pastor. But why was I a clock watcher? Because what was on them, it transpired on me. It transferred on my spirit, so I became the clock watcher. You all what you eat. Hey, that's it. So look at look at look what happened to our young people. They see no worship, no praise, no fasting, no going prostrate on the floor, no laying out before God, no more going to the altar like we used to and get down on the altar as a as a church body. We don't do that no more. We we too clean now. It makes me sick. We too we got you're not in the outhouse no more. You ain't got to go uh, pull no water out the well no more. God has blessed you, but yet. We don't, we don't even do the things that the old folk used to do, but they used to go to the church and lay on the floor and pray. We, they used to go Pastor, and kneel down. Go ahead. You know why they don't do that no more? Uh-huh. And I just want to touch on the praying part when you were saying when Jesus, because first of all, they're not anointed to do it. Oh, yeah. See, <laughs> you can't really pray for people and, and, and cast out spirits and stuff right. if, if you ain't meant to do it. Right, you right. So some people, like you said, some people say, "I want to, um, I cast you out in the name of Paul and um, <laughs> the Paul." And what happened? The demon jumped on them, kicked their butt, and had them running down the street naked. Right. See, some stuff you you just not meant to do. Right. That's why I tell people, everybody everybody can't really lay hands on you right. like that, because when you start going up against demonic spirits, right, and you start going up against strongholds, man, that's serious business. So right. some of them jokers know it, 
Some of them jokers know that, Pastor. Some of them jokers, it, here's the biggest thing. Here's the biggest thing, Pastor. Some of them jokers don't got a prayer life for their self. Right. So I can't pray for you when my prayer life sucks. Right. But what I can do uh, is get up in the pulpit in front. Uh-huh. In front. Because why? This is what I know. I'm performing. Yep, when that's I go it. up there, it's like a performance. Like I told you, uh, one pastor, and you know him, going to tell me he can out-preach another pastor. He said, I, he, said he don't want to go behind me because I know I can I can out uh, uh, I can out preach him. So, what what is this a competition? Right. <laughs> so right. now we trying to out preach each other, Pastor. Right. Like it's some competition. There's only one superstar in this show, and his uh, name is Jesus. That's it. His name is Jesus, Pastor. There ain't no freaking who can preach better and whose anointing is the best. And that's the thing that has ruined the church too, is the competition spirit. Right. Now, instead of trying to please God, we're trying to outdo each other. Right. Why are we trying to outdo each other in the church, Pastor? Right. <laughs> Why we got to get up there and we got it? Because now it becomes a performance. Yep. Um, Minister Chris said, the elected slide in the church. <laughs> How can they dance to the song that was written? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That uh-huh. was, you know, um, it's crazy. It, it's, it's true. Right. Um, let me see what else. Uh, 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 Delfina was talking about when people need prayer now. She said that was urgency. That's uh, it. Mr. Chris said some of them people be standing up testing line. <laughs> I know it just testing to be seen. Line. Just to be seen. Uh huh. Yep. People don't take their swords to church anymore. Mm-mm. Uh uh. Mr. Miles said they use uh, electronic devices and they put the scriptures up on the screen. Uh, even when the signal dies, and there's no way to follow along with the word. Uh huh. Yep. Yep. Uh huh. Yep. Uh, um, um, uh, Vance Ellis said, "Amen." Uh, our star is Jesus. See, when when you when we begin to take Jesus out the land, uh-huh. Pastor, this is what happens. Right. It's easy for false prophets to enter into the land. Right. To enter into the land. Um. And then with, I, I want to give y'all two more things of a false prophet, then we can wrap it up, Pastor, uh, right. uh, uh, Pastor Nino. Uh, another sign of a false prophet is they don't believe Jesus is the only way. And what I told you what Oprah said uh-huh. was he let, was T.D. Jet let her on his show after she said that. If somebody comes to my church and tell me, well, Pastor, I believe that there's more than one way to get to heaven than through Jesus, guess what? You ain't speaking to my people. That's just the bottom line. You're not speaking to my people. Uh, let me see here. It says, false prophets don't believe in um, don't believe in scripture. They don't believe in the full scripture. They 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 teach stuff that contradicts the Bible. So people of God, when anybody come up start preaching something to you that's contrary. Like Paul said, that that with the doctrine that you already learned, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't don't listen to that. Because we got some false prophets in the world. And a false prophet, watch this too, people of God. A false prophet is very appealing. He's very appealing to the eye. He's very appealing to how he talks. He sounds very and a false prophet is just that. He knows that he doesn't have the anointing. So I have to subdue you with other things. Oh my goodness. Uh-huh. I have to subdue you with other things. I have to get your attention with other things. And what? Oh, come on! <laughs> How does he do that? Because a false prophet. This coming straight from the top now, y'all. The uh-huh. false prophet will appeal to your flesh. Right. A false prophet will appeal to your flesh. He knows your fleshly, how the flesh and how the flesh operates, Pastor. Right. So a false prophet appeals to that. Right. That's why they can, like the video we seen, Pastor, with them throwing money at the guy's feet. You see what I'm saying? They, their appearance and stuff, it screams success. It screams I made it. But realistically, they're not. They don't have right. no anointing. They can't break no jokes. Because how can you be a false prophet in um? And be able to break jokes. It's the anointing that breaks jokes. Right. So if you're a false prophet, you don't have any anointing, people of God. They don't have any anointing. So guess what? If they don't got anointing, guess guess what they got? 
they got the they got the permission of the devil to operate in witchcraft. Right. See, a lot of people don't understand there is witchcraft in the church. Right. There is witchcraft, and let me tell you one of the biggest things about witchcraft, and we even got to watch it. We got to watch what comes out of our mouth. Right. In the church, because when we say stuff like, "Oh, I wish this person sit down," they preaching too long, or they get on my nerves. Mm-hmm. Pastor, why are we speaking negative stuff into the atmosphere? Right. Because guess what? When you say something against your uh, Christian brother or sister, watch this. If I say something like, oh, man, I wish Pastor Nino sit down and, and oh, man, I, I wish Pastor Nino fell. Guess what happens, people? Let me tell you what happens in the spirit realm. And when I say that about Pastor Nino, when I say something negative, because life, death and life is in the power of your tongue. So if I speak life, it's godly. But if I speak death, that's that's the Satan. So when I say I wish Pastor Nino fell, watch what happens. You give the demonic realm permission to come and get it and for them to do it. That's a, that is prayer and it's curses. So when we pray, we pray to God. So when you curse people, you're talking out your that is a form of witchcraft, Pastor. Because when I say, Oh, I wish Pastor Nino fell. Oh, Pastor Nino sucks. Oh, I wish his wife or such and such and such. I hope his ministry goes. What you're doing is you're giving the devil permission to do that. Because you're speaking into the atmosphere, people of God. So let's be careful with that. But, uh, um, Pastor, it's been hey, another great show. Amen. We can go on and on and on. Pat, yeah. uh, people of God, we thank y'all for tuning in tonight. Um, uh, just another great topic. Once again, please share this on your Facebook page. Uh, we always say... Uh, who can invite people. Uh, I, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do here. The person that come on next year, uh, next show and invite the, uh, invite the most people on there and they say they from you, we're going to have a, we're going to have a gift for you. We're going to have a gift for you. Right. We're going to have a gift for you. Help us evangelize. Help us to get this word out in the land. It ain't, it ain't for profit. We just want to get this word out in the land. Amen. But I, I really appreciate everybody for tuning in tonight. Man, y'all gave some great, man, it was some great comments tonight, Pastor. Amen. Oh, my goodness. That was some great dialogue between the people tonight. Amen. We appreciate that. Amen. Amen, Amen y'all. And I want to say thank you. And, and you can get invite, uh, because I want to pray again uh, before I go. Um, Pastor, and won't you be praying too? Let's, let, let, let's, let's change gears because there's a mother... There's a mother right now that 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 just inboxed me, and 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 she is at the state of de- depression. You know her household; okay. she's lost her, her control of her house. Uh, she has a, a young son that's very irate, uh, very uncontrollable, very high tempered, um, and and she, and she's at a at a place right now. Um, and I know there's other situations that you might that others might be dealing with. But we want to get ready to get into prayer, amen. I want to get into my prayer mode because I just know that God is able. And, and I know that, um, you know, we can do this together. And, and there's others. If you have a prayer request, go ahead on and uh, uh, put that up there uh, real quick. Give you uh, 10 seconds. Go ahead on. And if you got a prayer request, go ahead. And, you know, that, that hurts me. That hurts me, um, you know, his, his mother, you know, she's crying out. And, and the son is acting the way he's acting after the mom done carried him for nine months, done carried him through labor, done, done fed him when he couldn't feed himself. He don't understand because because of an emotional feeling and, and, and the enemy. It's basically the spirit of the enemy. And so we, we got to pray. Amen. Anybody got any um prayer requests? Amen. Anybody got any prayer requests? Amen. Any prayer requests? Go ahead and type them. Amen.
guys for anything else? Man, I'm just sitting back. Lovely right now. Me too, man. Me too, because you know what I had I, I tell you right now, I'm 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 almost at a I'm on a I'm also I'm like I'm on, I'm at a at a place right now because I see the enemy. The enemy tried this week trying to put his hand up. He tried to scandalize my name. And, 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 and people in the community is spreading falsehood and I binded it in July. And didn't even know we were, it was on the way. The spirit gave it to me July the 30th. And here it is this week. People out in the street scandalized my name, falsehood, uh, slander. But yet I'm, I got to still push. I got to still fight that rascal. Because that's that that's the season, you know. When you got something that God has birthed you in, out of your mother's womb, you birthed out of your mother's womb, he equipped you, he knew you, he formed you, he called you to this present day.
Good night.